Eagles Entertainment. The journey of the draft is driven by AAA. AAA, roadside is their strong side. Make AAA a part of your game day today. AAA, go ahead. With the 25th pick in the NFL draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select. You're listening to the Journey to the Draft podcast, driven by AAA. Welcome to the Journey to the Draft podcast, driven by AAA. I'm your host, Fran Duffy. We've got a lot to cover because the Eagles have made their first selection in the 2020 NFL Draft. Wide receiver Jalen Rager from TCU is now a Philadelphia Eagle. The Eagles made him the 21st choice of this draft. We're going to break it all down. It's time for Draft Buzz. Now it's time for Draft Buzz. All right, as I welcome in Chris McPherson, Ben Fennell, uh, guys, the first round is over. Ben, I know it was a little bit different for you, uh, not being in studio this year. C-Mac, uh, we are apart for the first draft in, uh, what is it now, almost a decade now since uh, we have not watched a draft together. But here we are. It's uh, Look, we'll, we'll get right into it. I want to get all your thoughts on, on the Jalen Rager selection. Ben, we'll start with you. This is a guy that we have been talking about since the summer. I've been a big fan of Jalen Rager uh, going back to when I first watched him in like July or June. Really, really excited to see him here in Philadelphia. Yeah, I thought it was a home run pick for the team, for the offense, for Howie, for Doug. I thought the draft and the whole kind of pecking order fit right into what the Eagles wanted. We kind of had our pick at two linebackers and two interesting receivers with Rieger and Justin Jefferson sitting right there. And I'm really happy that we walked away with Jalen Rieger out of those four really talented players. I think he's exactly what this Eagles offense needs and to make Carson Wentz's life that much easier in 2020. And I actually think Jalen Rieger's best football is ahead of him. And I think he's going to be a much more productive and explosive player in the pros. And I have some reasons for that, but I'm pretty excited for this pick, friend. Well, get, get into the reasons. Are, are, are you holding back? I, I'm just, I'm juice. I mean, I'll just get off my chest right now. If you're an Eagles fan, you have to love this pick, okay? There are fans that maybe are saying, well, we wanted Judy, we wanted Lamb, we wanted Ruggs. You're getting someone who has plenty of speed, okay? 447 was his combine speed, but he actually said at his conference call that he ran faster at his virtual pro day. He put on a little extra weight at the combine, shed that weight, and could run much faster. And he said, just put on the tape. And that's what you heard from Harry Roseman, Andy Weidel, and Doug Pierce. And when talking about him, he has versatility. He can line up inside or outside. He can take the top off a of defense. He can be a gadget player on jet screens and orbit motions. He can help you in the return game as well. So the Eagles got themselves a dynamic playmaker sitting there at 21. They didn't have to trade any capital to move up for their guy. They sat at 21. They got their guy. And like you said, Ben, I love it. You made Carson Wentz's life so much easier. And I have to imagine that Doug is going to go to bed tonight dreaming about Deshaun Jackson on one side, Jalen Rager, maybe in the slot, maybe on the other side of the field, and just figuring out what defense are going to try to do to, to take out both of those players. And meanwhile, you still have Miles Sanders and Zach Ertz uh, and Greg Ward and ascending J.J. Ortega-Whiteside and Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, just it's a huge, huge get here for the Eagles sitting at 21 and getting a playmaker like Jalen Rager. Ben, I, I wanted to get into your thoughts on, on why you feel he'll be a better pro. Because I, I've got some ideas that I want to hit on, but I know that you've got some thoughts on, on how he was used at TCU and how uh, it'll look a little bit different in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. And C-Mac, he did say he ran faster in his electronic pro day. He ran even faster last summer, making it on a Bruce Feldman's freak list, running an official 429 laser timed on top of a bunch of other impressive workout stuff. So this guy is not shy about the weight room and putting in the work off the field. But he's a really polarizing player, in my opinion. And the first thing I have written down in his report is positionless player. Because I didn't know what to call him. I thought he looked like a running back. He played out wide. He had some returner ability. He loves to break tackles. He's really physical in the open field. And he also was aggressive with the ball and high pointing it and things like that. That I said, you know what? I don't really know how TCU envisions him and how they're using him. When you break down his 2009 career snaps on offense, he was aligned out wide 84% of the time. Now, you have to remember, he's 5'10 and played most of his career at 190 pounds. That's a pretty small target to line up consistently outside the numbers. 
considering in 2019, you look at his production, but you also have to remember they had a true freshman quarterback. And I just felt like I think in the pros, they're going to use him a little bit more, like C-Mac was saying, in that gadget style. And I think everybody's looking at the Debo Samuel kind of complex in San Francisco last year in the RPOs, the quick game, the Jets, the end arounds, you know, the screens, easy offense, get the ball into hands of playmakers. Not everything has to be vertical shot plays. And I feel like I saw that too often in TCU's offense and you try to throw vertical shot plays to a small receiver outside the numbers with a true freshman quarterback. I just felt like they could have put him in more advantageous positions to be successful to use that 4-3 explosive speed and just put the ball in his hands. He lined up in the backfield 2% of the times, but when he did it, he was pretty productive. I put a clip out on Twitter where he was lined up in the backfield, the quarterback handed it to him, 80-yard touchdown. Offense doesn't have to be so hard. Get the ball into the hands of your playmakers ASAP. You know, the fact that he only lined up in the slot in the backfield under 15% of the time, that's okay. I think the Eagles are going to find more creative uses for him and just find easier ways to get yardage in the offense. I look at the Eagles offense and just how he fits into the structure, okay? So, you know, let's say they go 11 personnel, three receivers. He has that ability to line up in the slot, like you mentioned, uh, like you guys both mentioned. But then when they go 12 personnel, all right, with two tight ends on the field, one running back, let's say the running back's Miles Sanders, you've got Ertz and Goddard on the field, and you've got Deshaun Jackson and Jalen Rager on the outside. That's a problem for a defense, like a big, big problem for a defense. Because it's one thing when you're in 12 personnel with two tight ends and you don't have that kind of speed on the field. Down the stretch, really, since week two of last year, the Eagles did not have that kind of speed on the field on a consistent basis. And certainly after Nelson Aguilar got hurt, that was your one true real speed threat that you had left in the depth chart after Deshaun's injury. And when Nelson was out, down the stretch, they didn't have much of a speed element at all. So now when you put Deshaun Jackson and Jalen Rager on the field, that makes things easier for Carson Wentz. That makes things easier for Zach Ertz. That makes things easier for Dallas Goddard. It makes things easier for Miles Sanders, both in the run game and in the pass game, because not only are you stretching the field vertically, but you're also stretching the defense horizontally with those jet sweeps, with the screen game, with the orbit motions, and all the different things that you can do from a backfield action standpoint with a guy like Jalen Rieger, with a Deshaun Jackson already on the field as well. Now that's going to provide Doug Peterson, this coaching staff, a lot of eye candy, again, to move the defense, get them stretched out from sideline to sideline, and now you gash them in the middle of the field. It makes everybody more effective. So to me, I look at Jalen Rieger. He gives this offense, I said at the top of the show on Eagles Draft Central earlier tonight, he gives this offense a shot in the arm. That was the first note in my scouting report, in my summary. To me, I feel like he is one of the best game breakers in this class. I was super, super pumped for him to be the selection. He was a top three, top four receiver for me in this class. I love everything about this kid's game. He's not the tallest kid, but he can go up. He can get it. He's really competitive. He shows a lot of potential as a route runner. I'm a big fan of this kid's game. C-Mac, I'm, really, I'm with you. I'm really, really excited about his addition. The thing with him is, as a true sophomore a year ago, in 2018, he had 72 catches, over 1,000 yards, and nine touchdowns. He just turned 21 years old in January. He's a young, young prospect. You talked about his ability to play bigger than his size. And the one thing that I loved with this unusual offseason with the COVID-19 pandemic that's going on, and we don't know when the team's going to be at the NovaCare facility or when training camps will get underway, is that his father, Monte, who played for the Eagles, rounded out his nine-year NFL career with the Eagles. Look, he knows all about the game. He's not going to come in as, as a wide-eyed rookie. He's going to be showed and taught, this is how you be a professional. This is how you got to adjust to survive and thrive in the NFL. It, it's not going to be one of those moments where, you know, it's a new big city and everything's going to be brand new and, Everything's going to be a shock to him. His father, Monte, it was going to be, is going to be right there alongside him to guide him along the way. So I think that's going to be really, really huge in making that transition from going to an underclassman at TCU to the big time here in the NFL, knowing that he's going to have a prominent role or that the coaches, I'm sure, are going to expect him to have a prominent role as a rookie. And Fran, just to kind of paint the full picture, because he's an explosive, exciting, smaller receiver, 
but that doesn't mean he's really another Deshaun Jackson. I just want to make sure Eagles fans know what type of player we're getting. He's really more of a running back body. Yep. He's probably closer to a, a Miles Sanders type of level of athlete than a Deshaun Jackson. And I think he'll probably be used a little bit more like that positionless, bigger slot, that thicker, where it looks like a running back's out in the slot position. I think he's going to have that presence, not just a double move and take the top off the defense like Deshaun Jackson's kind of carved out in his career in his 10 years in the NFL. I think he's going to have much more of a let's get the ball in his hands immediately, let him break tackles, be exciting. And I was really impressed with how he played the ball in the air. He caught a Hail Mary as a true freshman against SMU at the end of the first half. Very competitive in the red zone, high-pointing passes for a 5'10 receiver. He was not shy about going up and getting that ball. Now, the issues I have with Jalen Rieger, he just had a couple drops. Some were tough, some were easy, right in the bread basket, concentration drops. But because of that, he has very impressive plays on the ball, I think, to counter every one of those drops. So when we're talking at the end of the day, what does Jalen Rieger provide versus a Justin Jefferson? I think Justin Jefferson, I think, has better hands, a little bit more nuanced route running. But the usage is much more diverse for Jalen Rieger. And I think his yards after catch and playmaking ability for himself is that much greater. And I think that's what the Eagles offense needs. They need somebody to make a play. Who's going to take something small and make it big? Who's going to take a little bubble screen and break a tackle for 80? And I think that's what I mean by saying easy offense. Who's going to make Carson Wentz's life easier where he throws a two-yard pass and it goes down in the stat sheet as a 70-yard touchdown? And I think Jalen Rieger is a playmaker waiting to happen every time he gets the ball. Real quick, the other thing I want to add is – Howie Roseman said that this team needed to get faster and had to get younger. And you've achieved those two things here tonight. Yeah, and I think ultimately, you know, Ben, you brought up Justin Jefferson. I think when you compare those two players, Justin Jefferson did so much work in the slot. I think when you look at his skill set, he's not the kind of game breaker that Jalen Rager is. You, you, I think when you have Rager, you have a guy that you know can line up outside the numbers with explosive speed. Obviously, you have that versatility. Here's what I like about Jalen Rager ultimately, okay? He's a guy to me that can create with and without the football. He can create separation as a route runner with his quickness, with his long speed, that short area burst. But then after the catch as well, with the ball in his hands, he can create and find open space and take it to the house. To me, he is a guy that has that game-breaking ability. After Henry Ruggs, I don't know that there was a guy that I felt as strongly about in this class that I would say, man, like this guy absolutely can be that kind of game-breaker. I look at Jalen Rieger. He was that next one up for me in terms of that ability to be that kind of creator for an offense. I, I'm Again, I'm really, really juiced for that addition. Really, really excited to see just ultimately you know, how he can impact not just Carson Wentz, but all the other weapons in this offense, I think are going to benefit from his presence because he, he's and, got and, that ability to be a vertical and horizontal stretch guy. No question, Fran. I think at the end of the day, we're always going to have the Jalen Rieger, Justin Jefferson complex in our back pocket just for them being close draft picks at the same position. And when I say I think Rieger can do more with the ball in his hands and then people are going to immediately go to the stats and say, oh, well, this past year he only averaged – yards after the catch per reception and Justin Jefferson averaged 6.4. Well, Justin Jefferson also had the Heisman Trophy winner, first overall pick, Joe Burrow. Jalen Rieger had a true freshman quarterback, you know, so you also have to look at the body of work. Justin Jefferson had 111 catches this year, high volume offense. Jalen Rieger had 43. It did not go the year Jalen Rieger had anticipated. He was only a junior. He wanted to get out of there, get to the pros. It did not go, you know, like his sophomore campaign had with that thousand yards and all those kind of gadget rolls in the backfield. The offense was a little dysfunctional. And that's why I think his best football is ahead of him in the NFL. Well, guys, really, really juiced about the Jalen Rager edition. I know you guys are as well. We'll be back here tomorrow. We'll be breaking down the Eagles selections on day two of this draft. Currently uh, have one second round and one third round selection. We'll see exactly what they decide to do. Uh, We'll be back here tomorrow on the Journey to the Draft podcast driven by AAA.